My name is Fernando Reis. I'm 27 years old. I'm from Brazil, São Paulo, and I've been lifting for 17 years. I started lifting through my dad. My dad put me in the weightlifting team in my sports club. We have like a sports club in Brazil. The name is Esporte Clube Pinheiros. It's the biggest sports club in South America. And my dad was the director of the weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting. So he put me in the sport. He didn't have a background in Olympic weightlifting. He did have a background in uh, powerlifter. He was a powerlifter for a while. He had the South America record for bench press. Uh, in the lower weight division, he was like 82 or 85. So he did train some strength and it was through him that I started doing Olympic weightlifting. My dad wasn't my first coach. My dad, uh, my first coach was Edmilson Dantas. He was, uh, he was an Olympic lifter from Brazil. He, he's been to uh, three Olympic Games as an athlete, also as a coach to two or three different Olympic Games. And so I started with him when I was 10 years old. He, he introduced me to the, the Olympic weightlifting movement. He, he showed me how to snatch. He showed me how to, to clean and jerk. And we worked with him for, for a long time through all my, my junior career. Okay, I started uh, the Sports Club Pinheiros. It's a sports, it's a sports uh, club. And my dad was the director of the Olympic weightlifting session. Uh, and Edmilson Dantas, back at the time, he was the coach at the club. So my dad pretty much put me to, to start lifting with him. He was an athlete as well, Edmilson Dantas. He's been to a couple Olympic Games, uh, 1988 Seoul, 1996 Atlanta. So he, he was a pretty good, like pretty high level athlete. And he, he learned weightlifting by himself. So he, he taught me pretty much everything that I've learned in the beginning, where I, uh, I learned how to snatch, I, I learned how to clean. So all my junior career, I trained with him. I was, a, when I started weightlifting at the age of 10, 10 to 11, I was 62 to 69. But I, I always like, I always when I, when I start Olympic lifting, I don't know why, I always watch the super heavy division. So all the videos that I had on the internet was uh, Kurlovic, was all the super heavy divisions. I always, I always watch them. And so I jumped a lot of categories. I, I didn't compete at 77. I know that I have a few competitions at 85 and then I jumped to 94 and then 105. And pretty much when I was like 19, I was almost like, I was always like a super heavy. Yeah, when I was 10, it was like we were just, when I was 10 and we started Olympic weightlifting, we just like playing around, like learning the technique, uh, running, doing some track and field, doing some, some kind of gymnastics, trying to, to be a better athlete. But we, we didn't work as much as with weight. We did a lot of repetitions, trying to maximize the technique, trying to learn the technique properly before we, we put any load because I'm pretty sure that, that in Brazil, I was one of the youngest to, to start like in such a young age. And back at the time, people had like a really close mind. Like they, they said, oh, why are you doing that? Like you're gonna get like, you're gonna be a midget. You're not gonna grow. You know, like you, you're doing something real bad for you. Like go play soccer, go do something else. So like we started, the beginning was, was, was kind of difficult with like family and friends, everybody like, they didn't understand the sport. So we started like just really worried about like not, not getting hurt, uh, just learning the proper technique. And then step by step, we started loading the weights. I would say at the age of 13, I was doing like already like two years of training and I was, was in the process of learning. It was for me, it was something fun at the beginning. It wasn't like professional or anything. It was just going and having fun with my dad at the gym. And also with Dantas was something like that we were just, I, I didn't know that I would become an Olympian or something like that. So I always wanted to, to lift heavy and go have heavy as I can, but never like something that I would struggle or even put myself in, his, in risk to get hurt. So I remember that my clean and jerk at age 13, I did 100 kilos on, on clean and jerk. And that was a big number and we were really happy. And then by that, at the age of 15, I did close to, 
I don't, don't remember the, exactly the number, but it was, was the Pan American Championships under 15. I did 115 to, with 135, something like that. So I was already like loading the bar. I did 15, I started like loading, and then 17, my best was uh, 140 and 170 at the 94 division. I won the, the, the Pan American division for under 17. I broke the records. And then we, we, we move on. And, and I had my target would be to be one of the best in juniors. Otherwise, I would quit Olympic weightlifting and do something else. So as a junior, was, was the age that uh, 20 in uh, 2010, that was Bulgaria Sofia. I did 171 and 205. That's where I got my uh, junior bronze medal. And, and I said, oh, so I'm in the right path. I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing to be one of the best in the world in the super heavy division as a senior. I did, I did way close to, close to 120. I would say like 117, 118, probably, probably that. That was the movement that at the age of 19 to 20, we decided to go like full step super heavy. I started working with the Cuban Luis Lopez, and before I had like a couple, not bad injuries, but I would I would have like a sore back, sore knee, and he was and he he he, he picked me up and said, "Hey, you you're supposed to be a super heavy because you 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 six two, you know, like you you need to be a super heavy." So we move and put like the food down, and like I start eating more, trying to gain weight. So when we were when I, when I was 20, we got the junior world uh, medal at Bulgaria Sofia. Yes, I was even more. Uh, a couple of periods I trained twice a day. I would go to school in the morning, have the first session right after lunch, and then take like a two-hour break and have another session. So since I'm the young age, I used to train like a lot. And I, I remember like when I was really young and we were going to school. I couldn't wait to, to have like vacation so I could train the whole day. That was, that was something that I always look for. Now I go a little bit slower, I don't train as much. Like I, I, one, one program that I remember on the back of the, my mind was, was kind of like the Bulgarian system that we did for a while. And that helped me for a while. But then we reached like a plateau and I couldn't get better. I was training every day. I was doing everything right. I was going like Monday, Wednesday, Friday would go like uh, in the snatch in the morning would go up to 90, 90%, like three sets of doubles. And in the afternoon we would go to clean and jerk, 85%, four sets of singles. Then I had back squats and then I had another auxiliary exercises. But I do remember this program because we did for a long time. At the beginning, I, I had catch such like an improvement, but then like I hit, I hit like certain level and I couldn't get better. Like I was training hard, I was trying my best and I couldn't get better any house. We changed a lot because I changed a lot. I started really young, really like my body weight was 62. So we, we were trying to adapt and for me and for Dantas was something new. That was something that nobody did before in Brazil. Nobody got like a kid that was 10 years old and started training. So back at the time, even like it wasn't that easy to find like articles about like how to train, you know, was, was pretty much his experience as a coach, as a, an athlete that he was trying to transfer me like the mentality of of being a weightlifter or being like a, a warrior at the platform, like doing your best, you know? So that, that's, I think was the foundation that I got, like how, how to perform my best in any situation, you know, like go there and do your best and have the, really this mentality of going forward. Because of course that the training program was, was so important, but what I really can get like from this young age was how to properly be, behave and be, in a, be an athlete, you know? And that, that was something that he gave me. That was funny because at the beginning, he would just give me like simple tasks, like, hey, tomorrow you gotta come here and you gotta know all the phases of the snatch, like the first pull, the muscles that are involved, the second pull. And so I, I started this learning process 
really at a young age. And then after that, going through conversations, like we're gonna have this competition, you really have to focus in, on, this, on this competition. You gotta do your best. You gotta sleep early, you gotta eat well. So since the young age, I had, I had this mentality of doing like always the best for my body to keep, my, to keep me healthy and go in the meat and just destroy, you know, just go there and do whatever, whatever I have to do to be the best that I can do in this day. If I win, it's fine. If I lose, as long as I did my best, I'm happy. I would say that when I, when I like, the, I, the best system that worked for me was when I started working for, with the Cuban Luis Lopez, that we changed like, so many things because I used to do like snatch, clean and jerk, pulls and squat, pretty much. Do a little bit of variation. And then when I start working with him, we did so much variation like drop snatch, uh, elevated snatch, hang snatch, all kinds of angles of snatch, uh, front squats, pals. So it was a totally like different program. What, what are we, I already had the foundation but we put all the strength movements like so high, like the front squat, the drop snatch, uh, back squat, the pulls. We, we, we really work what was best for me. I remember that I had a big struggle on my clean and everybody used to say, oh, you, you have weak legs because I used to clean with my hands like open. So I would clean with my hands open, my elbows would come down, I would lose the position and there is no way that I would stand up. So we were like, it seems that since the early ages, I always had like good jerk and bad clean. So when I started working with him, he said, hey, you, gotta, you, you actually don't have like weak legs, you have like a weak back. So we, we need to, to get you better, like a better gri grip when you, when you clean, put your elbows higher, keep your full grip, don't open your hands, because that's gonna force your elbows to go up, you know? So with that, like I remember that during six months, we had to step down, like take out the, the, the loads, work with 120, 130 kilos, 140 kilos. And my clean and jerk went to 182 to 205 in one year. So it was just because of the rack position. I gained a little bit of weight, close to six kilos, seven kilos, but my, my clean and jerk jumped like 20 kilos in one year. Exactly, exactly. I could say that with my first coach, he gave me the mentality, he gave me the spirit of the samurai, of going and fighting, but we were learning together. We didn't have like all the system, like really all the steps. So we're gonna do step one, step two, and we were doing step one, oh, that worked, let's go, step two. Oh, that didn't work, let's go back and step one. So when I started working with, with uh, Luis Lopez, with the Cuban, we had like a, I had a better understanding of myself because of my age and also the coach had a, a better understanding of the system, how to train and how to get better. Fuck it changed, yeah. Like targeting, targeting my weakness at the beginning was like working on my strength, like really going up on my squat, on my, my front squat, on my back, on my pulls at the beginning, but then uh, and then I had to work on my flexibility, also because of the grip, also how to do like a better clean. But what I, what I see like during all the process, each competition we do like a training cycle where we have like the, the base and then we go until the competition. And every competition is, for me, the cycle is different. I always have like something better to improve, something that I gotta work differently, the exercise, most of the time they, they vary and and for me is always like a different process and even even uh when i for example i got an injury i got hurt i have to step down and understand what is going on why did i get hurt always af after the competition we sit down like and we analyze we have two three weeks of of uh where we train our, around but we just play with the with the weights it's just a process of deloading and we analyze what we did good and what we did wrong and start start building like the next project for the next competition uh, the mindset like for my coach it's pretty simple it's like he put, he gets out the pieces and separates everything and starts working like differently if you have uh, flexibility issues it's gonna work with flexibility why are you working flexibility you're not gonna get your strength up 
you, you're going to work this issue and you're going to improve this issue. There is no way that you're going to work everything at the same time. So it's, what is really nice about that is that he gives you a, a, a heads up. He said, hey, we're going to work on that. Your snatch is going gonna to crash. You're not going to snatch good. You're going to, for example, you're doing whatever it is. Like you, you need to get strength on your legs. Your lift is going to go down. And that's, that's a normal process. You, you must understand. So I, I can understand when he talks to me and said during like two or three weeks, I'm not going to do good snatch and I'm not going to do, do good cleaning jerk. I'll, I'll be working on my strength. So, and therefore, and then we go like to different phases of, of the training process. 16 weeks, 16 weeks is, is a pretty, is a pretty basic sim like system that we work here. Yeah. Like for me, I, I'm used to train like whole year round. I barely take any time off because I, once like I really enjoy training. It's something that I like doing. So if you take, if you ask me, hey, when was your last vacation that you that you didn't leave for two weeks? I don't remember. Maybe five, ten years ago. I don't like since the Olympics. The next day that I they competed the Olympics, I was, I was in the gym, I was training because I, I didn't reach my, the level that I wanted to, so I was training, I was working. If, sometimes it's not good for your body, your body needs to rest, but, but I have the mentality of keep pushing and keep trying to, to be the best that I can. Sometimes I, I can win, sometimes I don't win. I would say like the first two weeks of the system, we, we go like low volume and low intensity. We just do like some uh, really easy exercises, do some power snatches, some, some squats, but really everything goes low, even like the, the volume and the intensity. We do like a little bit of bodybuilding, a little bit of, of uh, auxiliary exercises. We have like three, three principles of exercises. The, the, the classical, the snatch and clean and jerk, the specific exercises that are the variations for the snatch and all the variations for the clean and jerk, it's uh, the specifics and the auxiliary exercise where we do like strength, squat and bench press, military press, these other, other things that we have to do to improve our lifts. After two weeks, we start moving to some specific movements, some hang snatches, some snatch of the boxes, working like the second pull, uh, working some cleans of the boxes, doing some, and then the, the, the level of uh, intensity and also volume start going up really get, really slowly, slowly, slowly. For two or three, even four weeks, we work on that, doing auxiliaries. Usually in this period, I, I do, I would say, once or twice a week, we do snatch and clean and jerk, and we don't go heavy, we don't go, we go like 80%, 70% in this range like we if you're feeling good like you can touch like 80% but we usually like really really low like percentage that we work and we work higher percentage of the specific exercises well, the snatch uh, hang snatch uh, high hang snatch and this kind of exercises so that will be for the, between two to four weeks then after that we have this two two to three weeks where we start doing more the classical exercises, the snatch and the cleaning jerk. And then we start building from there and putting like volume and the usually in these two to three weeks, the intensity is already really high and the volume goes high as well. That one is one of the peak of the, the movement. No, we, we, we work together in the third phase of the training, you can call that, like almost like the intensity and the, the, the volume is, is almost in the same pattern. They are almost in the same line. That's where you have the most lo load of training and you have the most load of repetitions and also the intensity is between the range of 80 to 90%. So that's a pretty rough time. That's why it's, it's so, so like necessary to build this foundation before you stay on this this stage so we, we have like whatever you, like the third category where you do a lot of bodybuilding where you look up a lot of uh, different exercises to, to build the foundation and then you start like with auxiliary exercises where the volume and the intensity is a little bit up and the third stage will go like 
volume higher and intensity even even higher work a little bit of the the classical exercises that that will be the most I, I would say traumatic like problem li like how can I put that in words it is 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 a phase that you, your body has to be ready to take the volume otherwise you you can get hurt Like after the competition, the competition we have two to three weeks of active rest, where I go to the gym and pretty much I do whatever I want to do. We don't have even like a train that is reading. It's just like go there. If I want to do abs, I do abs. If I want to do snatch, I do snatch. If I want to do like 40 kilos of clean and jerk, I go there and do 40 kilos of clean and jerk. And during this period, is that where I let my mind like rest, I let my body rest but it's still like moving around, it's still like touching the weight, it's still like being around the weightlifting uh, system. And during this period as well, like we sit down with my coach and say, hey, we did this wrong, we did this right. So how are we gonna, we're gonna improve, what do we need to improve in the next, next phase? And that's pretty much where we choose the, the specific exercises for the next phase. So for example, if my first pull was really bad, well, we're gonna work a lot of elevated pulls, elevated snatch, you know. So we, we pretty much choose the exercise that we'll be working in the next, the next phase. That's perfect. That that's pretty much what we want to do. Is a, every cycle be a little bit higher than the, the cycle like the last cycle. So every cycle just a little bit, just adding just a little bit. If I did like doubles with 160. The next cycle, if I do like doubles with 165, in my mind, I, I know that I'm already stronger. So I don't, know, I don't need to go like 190 kilos all the time on snatch to, in training, you know, because I'm, I can get hurt. So the way that we take is with lower percentage and the specific exercises, I know that I'm stronger. And I, I know that I'm going to lift more. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to do and I'm going to lift more at the competition. I was real, I was real like wait, I was real well, what, what I do, you know, I, well, what I did in the last competition, you gotta see like, if it was really lower, if I got hurt or something, but always my PR is, is well, what, what is real, you know, like, only if, I, see, if something's out of the box, if, if you hurt yourself, you had a, a surgery, I never got any surgery, in 17 years of lifting, never got anything, so, I always, we always get what is a real PR, you know, like what is real for me, and then I base my percentage on, on that. Yeah, for this competition, it was really like really different because I got an injury, like I, I hurt my chest. I had, in 2016, before Rio, I had a pretty bad injuries. It was one of my elbow, and I, I ripped like 50% of my, my right elbow, and then I tore 100% of my lower chest. So when I was doing the base of this year, the beginning of the year, I was doing like some military press on this, uh, the auxiliary exercise and I hurt my shoulder like really bad. I couldn't like lift, I couldn't do anything. So for the whole, like at the beginning of the year, I couldn't lift, I couldn't do anything. So for this competition, I had six weeks of training. So that wasn't enough. I knew that I wasn't like 100% in shape but even though like when I hurt my chest, I, keep, I kept uh, squatting, I kept doing like some good mornings, I kept my strength on, on, on pace, I kept my, I, I know that, that I'm strong enough to do the lifts, but it's, it's not quite there, you know, like I had six weeks of training, it's not, it's not enough. I know for the Pan Ams, I'll be 100% shape. And my target is not, not like only winning the Pan Ams, it's, being between the best in the world. So I'm, I'm not looking for, for people that are competing in the Pan Ams. I'm looking for the Europeans, you know, what, what they're doing, like well, how much are they lifting? Who is, who is the best in the world? I'm, I'm going for them. That's for sure. I know that, that, that I have like this possibility. If I do a really good snatch and a really good cleaning jerk, I can get a medal either total or I can get a medal at, at the cleaning jerk. So if, I, if I'm healthy, if I keep healthy, if I don't get injured, I have a pretty good shot on that and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get it. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, it's like putting my name in the, the, 
the high ranking between the fifth and the best in the world, like keeping there, like placing like a real high total, so people, the Europeans, they see w how much I'm lifting, you know, so give, give them like a heads up that I'm coming and awards, put everything that I have on the tank. No, 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 because I already had six weeks of training. Okay. Even that I, I had to speed up the process, yeah. I had six weeks of training. So I'm in the range of 85, 90%. So this week, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start like putting more volume and keeping the intensity up because I haven't done much like heavy lifts for this, this meet. I just squat heavy, I just did a like, pulse heavy, and I knew that if I had like good technique, I could lift heavy. But now like starting a new week, I'm going to start like do, b doing some, some more volume in the, in the range between 70 to 90 percent. Yes, it's, and also like another different aspect that I've, uh, I have been doing is I, I have been doing since I got here in U.S. Uh, a little bit of uh, strength exercises like agility, like jumping, uh, moving, like sprinting like really when I used to do what I was younger and I haven't done like in so many years of my career so what I'm trying to do is go back to the basics and be more athletic me be more flexible and so I've been doing the, the two three times a week Tuesday Thursday and Saturday some strength and conditioning if you can put in these words because we are already strong enough but we're doing some kind of strength and conditioning to to be a better athlete so I can lift more weight So it'll be like two to three weeks, active rest, just like chilling, just seeing how, how I did on, on the Pan American Championships, how I felt during the, 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 the training program, uh, how much I lifted the, the Pan American Championships, how much of effort I had to put in those lifts, where I can improve and then start like, and going from there. So it's every, like we try to do like every, every training cycle just a little bit higher than the last one. Exactly. Like it, it's for me, it's been really different this year because we, we're doing like a different program. I have uh, this ambition of opening like a weightlifting school here in Miami, Florida. So uh, I've been training at Farina Sports Club, and we're setting up like a F, F race weightlifting team here. And so I've been training pretty much, sending him videos, talking with him every day. Also talking with Dantas, seeing like. They watch my videos, they say like how I'm doing, they pretty much, they, they know, they know me better than I know myself. Because we've been so many years together and usually what the coaches do is they know the athletes. They know like just to look to me how I'm doing, you know. So I just have to send videos and I, I have 17 years of training. I, I already have like enough experience to, to control myself and to, to handle myself during the, the training program. It's a general strength and condition gym. Like we have a couple uh, people in the, the weightlifting program, but they are really like beginners, like they are learning. And I love like to teach, like when, when I'm teaching somebody how to lift, it's a really good, really good reinforcement on my mind how to, how to lift, you know. It's, it's, it's really good. I like to teach somebody how to lift weights and go through the technique. And for me, it doesn't matter like if you lift like, te like 40 kilos or if you lift 200 kilos. It's, it's, what is, it really matters is the effort that you put in the lift. So I work with everybody. If I'm lifting like I'm snatching like 190 kilos and the guy next to me is doing 50. It doesn't matter. Like I'm, I'm going to support him. And for me, like this year is really different because I had to clear my mind. Like before the Olympics, we closed ourselves seven months in a training facility where I only left four times during these seven months. Two was because of me medical conditions where I got hurt, I had to go to the hospital and get some treatment. And the other two was because of uh, appointment with the, the Federation or of appointment with the Olympic Committee. So during seven months, we were locked inside of a training facility and we were training 24 seven. It was like three sessions a day, it was like training, sleeping, 
training, sleeping, eating. It was this, this, during seven months. We didn't do anything, just like lift weights. So I had to clear my mind. I, I, now this year I'm doing something different. We, we, I'm here in Miami, Florida, opening my own, my second gym. I have a, a gym in Sao Paulo where we teach uh, weightlifting, and now I, I'm ho opening like my second gym here in Miami. Was, was no, no, wasn't six days a week, it was three days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, two, uh, Tuesday, one Thursday, and two Saturday. So that was, that was something insane that we did, and because we were really trying to get the medal, and we were putting everything that I had, out the effort that I had, like, to, to get this medal. Like, I didn't see family, I didn't see, like, anybody during seven months, seven months, we locked ourselves in a, in a training facility in Rio and we forgot about the world, forgot about everything. No, crazy like that, no. Oh, I, I think it's, it, I, I got an injury because one of the one in the test event, like the platform broke with me on top. That was a good, a good way to get hurt, you know. But anyways, it's something that happens. It's something that you, you gotta, you gotta be a professional weightlifter. You gotta deal with, and it was something that I put myself and I, and I put my name on that, and I was like, Let, let's push as hard as we can, you know. Let's let's try to be the best, and there's a pay a, a price to, to be paid. I got I got hurt. I could have got a medal. So yeah, like in Houston, we did 195 and 230 yeah. so that's 425 Guadalajara 2011 I did 185 and 225 so uh, all those years I've been like in the meets I would have like a really good snatch and a bad cleaning jerk or then uh, I'll have like a bad snatch and a good cleaning jerk I never put them together at the Olympics I, I, I was able to put like 195 and 240 and that was the best so far. That was 192 and 235. That was a big, big PR, yeah. But then, like, like after that competition, we sat down and we, like, we said, like, we did something wrong. We should have pushed harder. Because I did, like, 235 and we called for the, for the day. I should have tried to hit 240. You know, we, we had a really good day and, and I sat and with my coach said, it's fine, we, we, we're good, like there's no, no point to push harder, but we should have pushed harder, so uh, the words would be like a higher level, you know, so we always try like to play as safe as we can, so we don't get hurt, because we don't have another super heavy in Brazil, if I get hurt, nobody's going to compete, so we, we really try to play safe, I could have pushed a little bit harder, but we, like, the point that I'm trying to do, is that we peak at the competition, and that, at that competition I was really good. I couldn't do like a little bit higher, but it was the first competition that I was able to put a good snatch with a good cleaning jerk. I would say like, I would say in the, at the Olympics, the Olympics was, even though that wasn't my, no, it was my best. The Olympics was like, I would say 240, and clean 245, I, I wasn't expecting to. I haven't touched this way like so long for four months before the Olympics, you know, 240. Because we had the injury and I'm, my mind was like going crazy. I didn't know that I was able to do it. I, like we had like so many doubts. Like after that again injury, how are you gonna recover and how are you gonna hit these weights? And we haven't done that in training. So we just prepared and said, hey, let's hope for the best. And I was able to pull like really good numbers. I had the crowd like cheering was a really like a magical movement for me, it was, was really nice. No, no, we, like we plan everything, so for sure, for me it would be try to get a medal in 2020, try to get a medal this year at awards, and I, I know that I, I can lift heavy to 240, 250, it's just a matter of being healthy and put the mentality and do the lifts, there's, there's no secret for it, just work your butt off and go there and do it.